Good morning, everybody. Your job today is to sing louder than me. Let's uh, lift our praise to the Lord, shall we? the chair 
and um, we will also end up having it when you first come in as well so this qr code if you've been in a restaurant during covid you know what this is right you go to a restaurant and they don't want you to have menus anymore so you have to scan this thing at the table right and then you hit the website and it takes you right to it so this is we put it on the back of the bulletin instead of having to fill everything out you can do it on your phone which makes it a little bit more convenient for connecting with us and that's a way for you to let us know if you have a need let us know if you have a prayer request um, let us know if you have a testimony or something but we just want to stay connected it's wonderful to come together once a week uh, to kind of have our holy huddle and get excited and kind of get ready for another week right of life and so but we want to be able to do life together beyond Sunday morning amen and so hopefully um, as I scan a little bit, there's a few of you that had an opportunity to be at our first devoted service last night. Um, very impactful night. I really want to encourage you. We'll do it next month again. Every month, our goal is to do it on the second Saturday of each month. This is a service that's designed to go deeper. It's not exactly a night of worship. We've done those. There is uh, more songs, but there's also a deeper devotion. A little bit more challenge we have confession and we have communion and I know that the people were there if you were there last night raise your hand uh, anybody want to just give a testimony briefly how did it impact you last night so big time so anyway I, I know, they, go ahead I know for me, um, uh, it was um, just a, a deeper a time of surrender mm -hmm. um, just really looking at all areas of life right and, and uh, just going beyond what you do because sometimes Sunday mornings it's, right. it's a little different you're if you're if you're volunteering somewhere and you gotta you, that's on your mind but really just <clears throat> focused on God and mm -hmm. so yeah I gotta God just used a different some different parables to right. really speak to me right um, and through songs and um, like the ocean song, and and then uh, and then uh, with that, God just brought about, um, you know, when he when when Jesus uh, called to Peter to walk on the water, because yeah. he said, "Lord, call to me," and uh, and it's crazy because Peter got out of the boat, but he wanted to know, he wanted to hear the voice because you know, right. they, they thought it was a ghost at first, and <laughs> right, they, right, they didn't know, weren't sure, but but there was other people in that boat. Right. Why didn't they get up? Why right. didn't Peter? So it's just like that song and the connection say, okay, what in your life prevents you from getting up? Right. Up? What's the barrier? So yeah, it just yeah. it causes you the spirit, just it, that that atmosphere last night, just yeah, that that time of just reflection and just okay, in yeah. my life, what needs to continue to be daily surrendered. Right. Great time of confession. Great time of just coming to the altars if you needed it, um, partaking in communion together, um, a deeper, a deeper challenging word, which we need. Amen. You need that. Um, so I just encourage you to be a part of that. Talk to somebody who came last night um, and, uh, and try to make it in the next month. So one of the things, too, just on what Garrett was saying, God wants to do a deeper work in our life, right? Last week I talked a little bit about it. We have a, a Pastor Jerry from Faith Community is going to be bringing the word this morning, uh, similar to uh, just that same theme that I was talking about last Sunday. I was telling him last night, I really believe God wants us to hear that, right? As a parent, do you ever repeat yourself? No, you don't? Because if you don't, I need to, you need to lead a parenting class. Uh, but as a parent, you repeat yourself, right? right. Uh, uh, anybody a manager uh, or run, uh, uh, manage any people, right? Do you repeat yourself, right? You a teacher, do you repeat yourself? Sure you do, right? Yeah. What do you think God's doing, right? Because sometimes God repeats it and he repeats it. There's things I'll say all the time. You hear me say them all the time, right? I've been pastoring for a lot of years. And I'll have people come up to me after I say something that I feel like I say probably every other Sunday. And they'll come up to me and say, that was amazing what you said. And I was like, you got to be kidding me, right? Wait till your kid, when your kids get to be about 30, they go, oh, I get it now. So that's a little discouraging for you young parents, but hold out hope. It does happen eventually. 
So, um, but we're real fortunate to have Pastor Jerry here who will really kind of speak because we want to go to that deeper level because God wants us to go to that deeper level. Jesus said, I came to give life, but life more abundant. So many of us are still very much in bondage to damaged emotions. We're in bondage to damaged thinking. Um, we need those strongholds broken. We need those walls torn down because God wants to get into that inner place and begin to transform your life in ways you can only begin to imagine. And so I'm excited to have Jerry come and bring the word in just a little bit. A lot of things happening. Uh, Jamie wanted me to mention our Victory School that we adopt. We, we need donations for them. So if you have new or gently uh, used clothes, especially I think kind of in, do you say 13 age range or something? kids through teens, anything that you can donate. Uh, they're trying to create a closet over there. So if you have anything like that, that doesn't mean go out and start purchasing a bunch of clothes. There's a lot, everyone has clothes. If you know somebody and they're in good condition, bring those in, we wanna collect those. They're also looking for pumpkins and haystacks. So if you have a connection to somebody and we can get a deal on those, if, if you wanna make a donation to impact just online when you see that, uh, select impact ministry um, and we'll make sure and get some uh, haystacks to them if if they need those or whatever so but anyways we wanted to make sure and make that announcement uh, everything else is going on you can check us out accessnas.com you have your bulletin um, but let's just continue to worship um, I'll lead us in some prayer here father Lord thank you for your faithfulness Lord for never giving up for continuing to invite us into this walk with you lord of life thank you that lord you do not just speak once but you speak daily lord you offer us fresh manna every day lord you offer us new mercies every day so i pray right now god that you would move in our hearts and our minds lord in our thinking and lord i pray that you would just remove any barriers right now Lord, all the things that we might be bringing in here with us, Lord, help us to set those aside so that we can receive all that you have for us, Lord, through the worship, through your spirit, God, and through the word. Lord, transform our mind this morning, God. We want to be, Lord, new creations. We want to be molded and shaped, Lord, into the image of your son, Jesus. We want you to continue to do the work, Lord, that you began in each one of us. So we just pray, Lord, for this worship, that you would inhabit this worship, that you would inhabit the word, Lord, because you are the only one who can bring about the change that we need in each one of our lives. So we thank you, Lord, in advance for what you will do in these next few moments, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen.
honor you. We worship you. In Jesus' name. Don't you appreciate their ministry? Amen. Thank you, you guys. Yeah, absolutely. You can applaud that. It's for, the, it's for the glory of God. They know that, right? You can tell by their spirit they know that. Well, I'm, I'm Pastor Jerry, as Pastor Renee indicated. And uh, so late last night, well, not too late, I guess it was about 8 o'clock, I decided, well, if I'm going to share a word with folks, maybe I should know kind of what's been shared the Sunday before. And by the way, I started my message two weeks ago, okay? So just in case anybody's wondering. So I'm listening to Pastor Renee share her message online, and I'm going, oh my goodness. This sounds really familiar to me as I was looking over my notes of what I'm going to share. So here's the deal. I figure either... Somebody here really needs to hear this, yeah. <laughs> or I really need to hear this. What are the two? But or Pastor Renee really needs to hear it, right? But uh, this is a, this is a word that that God has um, kind of put on my heart and in my mind and in my life and in, along my journey. And it kind of uh, it kind of starts off with uh, oh, I'm going to grab my water. I forgot that. <laughs> Thank you, Ben, again for that. Um, it starts off with an old commercial. Do you remember a commercial where somebody said, as they lie on the ground, I've fallen and I can't get up. I've fallen and I can't get up. You remember that commercial? Yeah. I, mean, I think most of you, except for some of you young folks, maybe, but somebody had fallen down and it was uh, a commercial for a gadget that would allow you to contact somebody in case of emergency, right? Life alert or something like that. Uh, this is not paid for, by the way. <laughs> thought I'd share that with you online. Welcome, by the way. But yeah, but if you do want to donate to the church, I guess you, that's where Renee says, you know, feel free. Um, so I've fallen and I can't get up. Uh, the Sometimes you're just stuck and you've got no place to go. Um, just a, a little bit of my background. I've uh, been an associate pastor, pastoring for a number of years since, uh, my goodness, a long time. Yeah, 30, 30 some years. And uh, concurrently, I, uh, I worked in the public sector in a nonprofit organization, a few nonprofit organizations working with families at risk in counseling and supports and uh, stuff like that. So I, I have done a lot of counseling through the years with uh, children and families and individuals and couples. And inevitably, when folks come into my office or I, I go into their homes, whatever the case was back in those days, um, I would meet with people that were exhausted. Meet with people, that's a lovely voice, by the way. I love that. I don't know if you can hear that online, but there's a little baby cooing in the back of the room. It just speaks life, doesn't it? They would, they would arrive, though, in, in my office, and they were often exhausted, done, stuck. Kind of, kind of had that sense... I've fallen and I can't get up. And the, and the question would come, do you think, Jerry, do you think that things can change? Do you think there's any hope? Because I don't see any. I'm not experiencing any. I can't imagine any. Do you need me to hold her? She's good. Oh, that's that's where Pastor Renee's gone off to. Well, you're definitely excused. So, so they would ask, "Do you think there's any hope? Do you think there's any possibility for change?" And and my response was typically, "Well, uh, yes and no." And they'd look at me kind of quizzically, like, "What do you mean, yes and no? That you're you're not very helpful at this point, right?" 
And, and my response was, was coming to them from the standpoint that in yourself, it's a rough journey. It's a rough journey. But I believe, and, and I could share this in the marketplace with families that uh, claimed faith. Sometimes there was some constraints to that. But uh, within ourselves, those changes, those hopeful situations, those potential of getting unstuck possibilities, they, they can't be found. They can be supported for a little while sometimes within our own strength within our own means, within our own understanding, but eventually we're stuck again. But we have a God that can change things for real. Amen. A God that changes everything. A God that is available and is adamant, really, that he can change lives. And here's the kicker. He desires, he wants things to change for us. He wants us to get unstuck. He wants things to get better. He wants there to be hope for you. So if you're struggling with doubt this morning, and maybe even doubt about God's ability to really change the situation, if you're living in a land of, of thinking, you know, I'm almost to the point where, where I'm thinking maybe this is just the way it's always going to be. Maybe this is just my lot in life, um, this stuck place. Or, or maybe if you're thinking, man, I, I thought that was a light at the end of the tunnel, but I'm pretty sure it's a train. Hmm. <laughs> like, like you're in that place, you know. I've looked, and it no longer looks like light. It seems to be a train coming at me. If you're that in that place this morning... Um, I want to invite you to consider God's word for us as we look into it. Let me, uh, let me pray for us. Father, we're going to look at your word this morning from a lot of different uh, places uh, in your scripture, in your holy scripture. And, uh, and we understand that they're, they're just going to be words unless we allow your Holy Spirit to speak into our lives through your word. And they're just going to be words if we allow your Holy Spirit to speak into our lives and leave them at our ears and don't invite your Holy Spirit then to have his way in our heart. And even when we've heard them and, and you've placed them in our hearts, it won't mean much unless we invite your Holy Spirit that indwells us to go with us to give us power to apply your word to our lives. So, Father, help us this morning to be open <clears throat> To having your vision for us, your understanding, your explanation of hope, your complete knowledge and, and complete awareness of what we're stuck in, and help us to hear from you in a different way, to learn from you in a different way this morning, to know you more deeply than we ever have before, and to experience your transformation in our lives this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we're on a journey of grace. If you're sitting here this morning, you're on a journey of grace. Let me explain what that means. Grace is unmerited favor. We can't earn it. It's, it's what God gives to us. And he begins giving to us through something called provenient grace, right? This is the grace that comes and finds us right where we are. And if you have not yet been saved, um, you're here by provenient grace. God worked out your circumstances to bring you here this morning to meet with his word and to hear from him. That's provenient grace. It's the grace that God sends our way before we even know him. And that's really a lot of love on his part because his grace finds us in a lot of different places, in a lot of different spaces, right? And yet he continues to come to us and invite us into relationship with him. And so if, if you are not saved yet, if you're not walking in relationship with him, provenient grace has brought you here this morning. His love that is extended to you brings you here this morning to hear his words, to meet him. And we'll have that opportunity. 
And then the next leg of the journey is saving grace. And this is the grace that exists in the person of Jesus Christ. God sent his son into this world that he might save us, that he might extend to us his love completely, that he might save us, res rescue us from our stuckness, from our sin. That's his saving grace. And then finally, his transforming grace, once we're saved, goes to work. Now, I think probably most of you have experienced his saving grace here this morning. But I think a lot of our stuckness comes when we refused or don't understand how to interact with his transformational grace. And so what we do is we often say, thank you, God, for saving me. I believe I'm saved. And now I will work to transform myself. And we take it out of the grace realm and go back into the works realm. So we may not work for our salvation, but we're trying to work for our what's called sanctification. We're trying to work for our holiness. I'm trying to make myself be, be better. And man, that I've fallen and I can't get up. That's where we end up. And it becomes this battle of try. I didn't try right. I didn't try harder. I didn't I gotta I gotta try different. I gotta try, try. And so it's this repetition. And we end up stuck. Well, God invites us into some things that I believe he wants to do in our lives through his transforming grace, his grace. Remember, it's a free gift. It is not, it's not by our works, not by anything we can do that we're saved or transformed. And so what does he invite us into? First of all, there's a lot of new things happening when God gets involved. And I think we forget that sometimes. I know I do. First of all, there's, there's a new beginning. A new beginning. Do you know when you're saved, you have a new beginning? Amen. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says this. Therefore, if anyone, not just the pretty people, or the wealthy people, or the people with means, or the popular people, or the fill in the blank, if anyone is in Christ, the key there is in Christ. He is what? A new creation. A new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. When I, when I think of this, I think of a game because that's my maturity level. Um, I think of, uh, <laughs> you, you know, the, do you remember the Etch-a-Sketches? See, first I've fallen and I can't get up, and, and then the Etch-a-Sketch. I'm dating myself here. So the Etch-a-Sketch, you remember that. You could, you, it had the two knobs, right? And, and you did the knobs, and you could draw anything that had straight lines, pretty much, unless you were really gifted. Um, it, it, yeah, stairs mostly. Yeah, exactly. And uh, so what did you do when you were done with what you had drawn? And you wanted to start over? Shake it, shake it. Shake it up. And then you see, and it's all gone. Right? When, when God saves us, he shakes us up. It's, it's all new. It's all new. And, and, and we, we don't live that way sometimes. We like, we like bump the board and then say, well, let's see. God says, it's like, it's a clean start. It's a clean start. Ezekiel 36, 26 says this about this new beginning. If any, well, first anyone, remember that, passed away, new has come. Here, I will give you a new heart, God says. I'll give you a new heart and a new spirit. God's work begins with heart surgery. That's like the depth of who we are. That's our soul. That's our being. God's work begins there. He says, I'm going I'm to give you a new heart. And then the other part of it is, I'm going to put a new spirit in you. I'm going I'm to take that heart of stone and I'm going to give you 
a new, new heart. I'm going to give you a heart of flesh. It's a new beginning and a new heart that God gives us when we are saved. A brand new heart, a new soul, and a new spirit God puts in us. Well, what does that lead to? Well, as we read on, as we understand, that new heart and that new spirit lead to some new fruit. This is some of what Pastor Renee shared with you last week, right? Luke 6, 43 through 45 says this, For no good tree bears bad fruit, nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit, for each tree is known by its own fruit. The good person, out of the good treasure of his heart, oh yeah, I've got a new heart. Out of that new heart produces good, and the evil person, out of his evil treasure, produces evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. See, our, our issue isn't a fruit issue. Our issue is a heart issue. Remembering that we have a new heart that God's given us. And out of that heart, then the fruit is produced. Well, what does that fruit look like? We go back to Galatians 5, 16 through 25. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. That's that new spirit that God puts in us at the point of salvation. Let that Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful, sinful nature craves. You won't be getting stuck. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of, the, of what the spirit wants, right? And the spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other. Anybody here say amen? <laughs> right? Yeah. These, these, these are fighting each other. So you are not free to carry out your good intentions. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, divisions, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. There's several places we can get stuck there. There's all kinds of stuck there. All kinds of sticky stuck. You know, when we follow the desires of our sinful nature, that's what happens. But let's read on. But the Holy Spirit produces the Holy Spirit produces. Jerry doesn't produce fill in the blank with your name. There doesn't produce the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. And listen to what the Holy Spirit produces. Love. Joy. Peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Man, I want, I want to be that guy. Right? I want to be that guy. But the problem is, is I look at that, that list. Well, let's go on. I'll, I'll get there in a second. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. So those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and their desires of their sinful nature to, to his cross and crucified them there. But since we are living by the spirit, let us follow the spirit's leading in every part of our lives. So we're following the spirit's leading. Well, how do we follow the spirit's leading? How do we do that? So we have a new beginning, right? The heart and the spirit. We have a new fruit as the spirit, as we follow the spirit and the spirit develops those in us, which leads us to a new focus. And I think this is where we get off sometimes. I know this is where I get off sometimes, get, get off track. John 15, four through five says this, remain in me, and I will remain in you. Just as no branch can bear fruit by itself unless it remains where? In the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. This is Jesus speaking. The one who remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit. For apart from me, 
You can do nothing. That's my problem. I'm saved by him, but then I become the guy trying to produce fruit that looks like love and joy and peace and all those things. And he says, that's my job. I'm the fruit producer. So I focus on, the, on remaining in the vine, not fabricating fruit. My focus should be on remaining in the vine and not fabricating fruit. Man, that's good. I don't care if I did say it. <laughs> Remain in the vine. Focus on that and not fabricating fruit. Philippians 3, 12 through 14 says, I don't mean to say that I've already achieved these things or that I've already reached perfection, this is Paul speaking, but I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. He possessed me, and I press on to reach that. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus, this is a part of that new focus, so we're focusing on remaining in the vine rather than producing fruit or uh, fabricating fruit, and here's our next focus, but I focus on this one thing, Forgetting what lies in the past, forgetting what lies behind, and looking forward to what lies ahead, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. I think this is one of the biggest challenges that we face also, is that, that we focus, as God starts to change us and produce fruit in us, we begin to focus on the past and and what has happened is I've made some bad choices in my past that have led to scars that I'm having to deal with now and I'm trying to keep beating myself up over the past choices rather than leading li living in the grace and the transformative grace of God in the now and trusting him that he's creating me into a different person and, and, and so we, we keep going back to the past and saying, no, I, I, I'm, I've met with a, a young man that's working through this now. And, and the challenge is that there, there's almost guilt about, there's, there's this guilt about becoming a new person. Do I deserve to be a new person? And let me, let me be very clear. The answer is no, we don't. It's grace. Yeah. That allows us to be new people. It's God that transforms us as we remain in him. It's not by my works. I can't produce squat when it comes to fruit. My fruit's nasty fruit. But God can produce joy and peace and love. And he can even help me on the freeway, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Just confessing a stuck place for me, all right? I've fallen and I can't get up off the freeway on ramp rage, you know? So, so, so he, that's the invitation. Forgetting the past and looking forward. Focus on the future, not the past. Focus on the future, what God is doing in my life, what I'm trusting him for in my future rather than the past. And, and that can be... That can be awkward because we don't know who we are yet to become. And so there's, we're almost sitting in this, I, 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 I just know who I am not anymore by God's grace. But God's still teaching me who I am yet to become. I can give you a picture of that. Um, his name is Jesus. It's not going to happen until we're glorified. Right? Until we, we die and we're with him. But he's going to, as we remain in him, as we learn of him, and, and we're going to go there in a second, uh, talking about the result. He's going to make us more and more like Jesus as we journey with him. That's the beauty. So it, it should look more like Jesus over time. It's that fruit that he's producing in us. So we focus on uh, remaining in the vine, not fabricating fruit. We focus on the future, not the past. And then we focus on transformation, not behavior modification. 
So I think what we do, and Pastor, uh, Pastor Renee talked about this a little bit last week as well. What we do a lot of times is we will say, okay, God, thank you for saving me. I know I couldn't save myself. Thank you for forgiving me of my sins. I, 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 I'm, you know, in, totally indebted to you, God, for that. Now I'll take on transformation. I've got a list of the fruit here. Um, what does it mean for me to be more loving? I'm going to do my best to be more loving. What does it look to look like for me to be more joyful? I'm going to put more of a smile on my face. And, uh, you know, we start doing all these things to change our behavior, our outward behavior. And God's saying, no, I, 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 I started this whole thing, remember, with heart surgery. Right. Do we need to be reminded? Right. Yeah, daily. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. I, be, I, you, I began a brand new work in you. You are not who you used to be. You've been bought with a price. Amen. And, and now I have a plan to transform you. And it has nothing to do with you making your fruit better. It has everything to do with you being transformed by me, he says. So remain in me. Remain in me. Trust me. Let's journey together. So a new beginning produces a new focus well, produces a new fruit, which produces a new focus, and, and that leads to a new result. A new result. What? I've fallen, and I can get up. Right? All of a sudden, it's, it's changed. It's changed. What's the new result? Well, first of all, this is what, uh, what um, insanity is defined in, as by Albert Einstein, right? doing the same thing right over and over and expecting what a different result <laughs> expecting a different result so we're going to do the same thing over and over again and expect a, a different result well that's not fair pastor jerry <laughs> right i'm talking to myself you guys all right if, if that happened to apply to you you're on your own no you're not uh, i i do that in my life sometimes right I, I, I do the same thing over and over again. And, I, and man, I thought that would get a different result. I thought that would give me better fruit. I thought that would. No. With a new heart and a new spirit leading to new fruit and a new focus, God has promised us a new result. Listen to this promise from God. Matthew 19, 26. Jesus is actually speaking to his uh, disciples after he had talked with uh, a young rich man that came and said, asked Jesus, said, what do I have to do to get heaven, basically? Um, I can purchase everything, so what do I have to do to get heaven? I've kept all your commands. And Jesus said, great, you've kept all your commands. In other words, I've, I've checked off all the fruit. Looks like I got this dialed, Jesus. And, and Jesus says, one more thing, go and sell everything you have and give your money, the, the, give your money away, basically. And, and the scripture says that he went away sad. He couldn't do that. He couldn't give up that fruit. And the reason is because the other fruit, the, the check boxes that he had done, I kept all your commands, they were all just trying to change his behavior. And Jesus said this in Matthew 19, 26. Jesus looked at, at, at his disciples, actually, after he had done that. They said, well, then how can we get into heaven? How is it even possible? And Jesus replied to them was this. He said, um, he looked at him intently and he said, humanly speaking, it's impossible. It's impossible. Humanly speaking, you've fallen and you can't get up. Humanly speaking, you can't fabricate fruit. Humanly speaking, you have no way around whatever it is or over whatever it is you're stuck in. But with God, everything is impossible or is possible. Everything is possible. With God, everything is possible. Man, that's a great promise, you guys. If we could hold on to that, with God, everything is possible possible you see as, as you look back through scripture with god a nation walked across a sea on dry ground with god an infertile old couple 
became the father of many nations, the parents of many nations. With God, water was made into wine, good wine. Just saying. With God, a man disabled for almost 40 years got up and walked away. With God, a woman hemorrhaging for 12 years, and, and by the way, she'd spent all her money to seek counsel from physicians, reached up through the crowd and touched the hem of his garment and was instantly healed. Amen. With God. With God, 5,000 plus were fed with five small loaves and two little fish. It's like a happy meal. <laughs> God fed 5,000 plus with a happy meal. With God, a storm wild enough to scare seasoned fishermen was silenced. With God, a blind man received sight. With God, a dead man was brought back to life. Nothing is impossible with God. Everything is possible with God. I was thinking of my experiences. With God, a recovering alcoholic given no hope for life due to her failing liver is still alive and no longer needs surgery. With God, a couple that saw no hope for reconciliation of their marriage have renewed their vows and are now helping other struggling couples to find hope. With God, an abusive husband and father has quit drinking and doing drugs and is rebuilding relationships with his wife and family. With God, a homeless meth addict is now married with a home and a family and leads a program helping others to discover life off drugs and life off the streets. With God, a young mother debilitated by worry and anxiety is learning to enjoy life and her children again, moment by moment. With God. With God, a pastor whose house was sold, son was shot, brother died of pancreatic cancer, and wife had a fall resulting in a brain bleed all during a year of COVID is preaching about hope in Jesus this morning. Amen. With God, everything is possible. With God, everything is possible. And, and here's what I want you to hear this morning. Humanly speaking, it's impossible. But with God, everything is possible. Philippians 1.6 says this. This is Paul sharing to the church. And I am certain that God, who began the good work within you, he began the work. He will continue his work. Whose work? His work. Until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. That's God's promise. That's God's capability. He began the work in you. He knows you've fallen and you can't get up. He also knows that everything is possible through him. And if we remain in the vine, if we remain in him, and we ask, God, search me and know my heart. Try me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's anything separating me from you. God, am I, am I, am I trying to fabricate my own fruit? <laughs> you know, I, I began believing for your salvation but somewhere along the line in your transformation, I quit, I quit believing in you and started to just muster up whatever strength I could for myself. He will complete that work in you. So I was thinking about some ways to apply this this morning. I don't, I don't know where you are or what you're challenged by. I think if you're breathing, you're probably challenged by something. At least that's been my, my experience, both, both personal and in, in counseling. Um, in this life, there will be, yeah, troubles. Yeah. 
So it's it's part of that, the journey. And and we we all have different places that we get stuck. I shared one with you on the freeway, the on-ramp. Um, we have places we get stuck, right? Um, so so with me, it, it, it would be, and, and God continues to deliver me from this anger a long time ago, you know? And, and my wife would testify that I have been blessed with God's grace <laughs> in those areas, you know? And, and for, for you, it might be different things that you're challenged with, or maybe you're, you know, you're struggling with uh, an addiction and there's a lot, lots of different ways and things we can be addicted to, right? Anything that takes the place of God in our lives, basically. Um, and you're falling and you can't get up, you're just stuck. I, I would invite you to, um, to hang on to, did you get a handout? Mm -hmm. Okay, I would invite you to hang on to that. There's the, and then meditate on those scriptures, like read back through those scriptures and, and ask God, ask his Holy Spirit to take the scripture and help you to apply it to your stuck point. And, and God, what does that look like? Here I am stuck in this freeway mess or whatever it is. What does it look like to have your new heart in me? And what does it look like for me as I'd rather give a special wave to that person? Um, what, what does it look like for me instead to allow you to love that person through me? Oh, love. That's right. I don't feel love right now, but I feel your love for me, God. And so maybe... I can just rest in that right now. Maybe I don't need to, to give a special wave. And, and God does that. If I take the time to remember that he's given me a new heart and that his spirit indwells me, if I take the time to remain in the vine through his word, through prayer, through meditation, through worship, if I take the time to remain in the vine, he begins to transform me. And all of a sudden, it doesn't, it, it's not dependent on how I fabricate fruit. Because all of a sudden, this stuff starts sprouting up. And, and all of a sudden, there's, there's more joy. Now, is it, is it this kind of gain? I haven't experienced that kind of gain. Bless you if you have. That kind of gain where it's just like, wow, there's just like new fruit every day. <laughs> it's so cool. That's not my experience. <laughs> My experience and the, the experience of the folks that I've traveled with or journey with is that it's a process and it's, it's a recognition and a re-recognition. Oh yeah, I'm not living anymore according to the passions of the flesh or the, the spirit of the flesh. I'm living according to the spirit within me that God has placed in me when he saved me. That new heart and that new spirit. And so I'm going to listen to you and care what you think and, and respond as you empower me to respond. So read a passage maybe each day this week. Um, maybe pick one and study it. Look at the context that it's in. Make observations, more applications. Maybe memorize one of it that you could study. Say instead of shouting at that person, I keep going back to my issue, <laughs> shouting at that person, <laughs> fill in your blank there. Um, maybe share one of these passages that spoke to you or that you're, you're, that's going to help you in your stuckness. Share that with somebody else. Um, I, I think God intends for us to journey together, by the way, you guys. I really do. Uh, I think that's, that's part of our uh, love God and love people, right? Jesus said it pretty simply. And so that's what we do. Yeah. Um, pray. Pray that passage out loud. God, you said in your word, this is it. I'm, I'm trusting you for that now. Um, show yourself to me. Help me to flesh it out. Even at home. Oh, man. I can be holy out there, but really, God, you want me to be holy at home too? You want to transform me at home? Have you not seen my home, God? Right? Right? Sometimes it's harder at home. 
uh, it's probably just me, but yeah. <laughs> it, it, that's because we know each other so well, right? So it's, it's, it's a lot easier to be holy at, at church, but, but when we go home, it's challenging. God knows that, right? And, and so God help me, even on my commute home or, or drive home or whatever, help, help me to, to hear from you. Help me to, to respond by your spirit again. And then invite the Holy Spirit, again, like Pastor Renee said last week, to renew your mind. Invite the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, continue to renew my mind. Help me to think differently about things. And he'll do that. He, he does some incredible things. Really a lot in the area of helping us to think differently and changing the desires of our hearts. Amen. Right? The things that we consider valuable. He does that as we ask him to and as we allow him to. There's a, a passage in Jeremiah 32, 17, and I, do, I don't have this up on, the, up on the screen here, but I wanted to share it with you. This is actually a prayer. And it says this, O sovereign Lord, you have made the heavens and earth by your strong hand and powerful arm. This is Jeremiah 32, 17. Nothing is too hard for you. Nothing is too hard for you. And I, and I was thinking maybe this would be a good prayer to say this morning as we close. Just, um, in fact, I'm going to invite you now. Just bow your heads, close your eyes, and I'm going to say this, and then you would fill in the blank. So let's take a moment to pray Jeremiah's prayer and regarding your stuckness, your impossibility. You've fallen, you can't get up. I don't know what it is. I don't need to know what it is, but God already knows what it is. So, O oh, sovereign Lord, nothing is too hard for you regarding this in my life. And you fill in that blank right now. O oh, sovereign Lord, nothing is too hard for you regarding And now, Father, all glory to you, who is able, through your mighty power, at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we could imagine or than we ever might ask or think. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>